from festive Mears Park in downtown St. Paul, the perfect place to shine light on some of the people who brighten the land of 10,000 stories these past few holiday seasons. We'll begin with a Christmas mystery solved in a most delightful way. Once upon a crime, a wee bit of Christmas was stolen. Yes, stolen from a kindly artist. An artist who loves her little creatures. The Irish have their leprechauns, and the Germans had their gnomes, and the uh, Norwegians had their Ulenissa. Suzanne Tofte has risen to fame among Norwegian folk artists though she lives not in Norway, but near St. Cloud, Minnesota. This is the Yulanissa enjoying his Ludafis supper. Suzanne's paintings sold in gift shops from Scandinavia to North America. This is Merry Christmas in Norwegian. But her story took a turn 40 Christmases ago when one of Suzanne's favorite creations fell victim to a heist. One morning, I looked out the window, and I saw my gnome was gone. Suzanne's hand-painted, red-cheeked, guest-welcoming gnome snatched from her front yard Christmas display. Susie went and called the cops. Jack is Suzanne's husband. I told them they stole my gnome, and he said, what's a gnome? They said, can you give a description? And I said, well, yes, he has a, a blue jacket, and a real tall, red, pointy hat and lots of whiskers. And he said, I'm sorry, ma'am, but I'm afraid you'll probably never see him again. He's probably in somebody's dorm room. And this was 40 years ago. <laughs> Suzanne went back to painting, making more little friends. They're sold all over Norway. As her memories of her old one faded. Do you order whenever you're ready? Till just last month, when she and Jack stopped for a bite at Arby's. We were in the parking lot just getting in the car, and I happened to look over at the little strip mall. Susie saw it first, yeah. I said, Jack, there's my gnome. Across the parking lot, there he was, welcoming customers to the UFTA record store. She said, Jack, there's my gnome. And I said, ah, what are you talking about? You know? But even Jack knew upon closer inspection. There's none other like it anywhere. So then we went into the store, and Jack was kind of gruff to the man. He said, where did you get that gnome? Got it at a garage sale about 10 years ago. Turns out Jeffrey Peterson has a thing for gnomes. Everyone needs a gnome. The woman from whom he purchased this one told him she too bought it at a garage sale. The gnome's hiding place before that, unknown. He was in captivity. <laughs> Might still be. Alrighty, sir, it'll be $28.98, please. If Jeffrey hadn't opened UFTA Records just this year and on a whim pulled from his garage his strip mall version of a Walmart greeter. I was like, well, do you want it back? <laughs> she pondered that. This artist who has sent her paintings around the world. Then Suzanne Topti decided her gnome looks perfect right where he is. Oh, he was smiling. <laughs> he was very happy. <laughs> so this Christmas, let it be written, gnome is where the heart is. It is a good story and it has a happy ending. That's the stories I like. <laughs> In the land of 10,000 stories, we are definitely fans of happy endings. Well, by now the decorations have been hung. Always a special time for one Twin Cities mom, for whom the holidays bring back precious memories. Up from the basement or down from the attic, Christmas emerges. Where do you want this? Out of boxes. I have a lot of happy memories of that little girl. That little girl. Paula Miller, seven years old, 1963, when she was diagnosed with a blood disease. And only once did she say to me, Mama, when can I go out and play with the other kids? She didn't cry, but I cried. 
Terry Hack was instructed to care for her oldest daughter like she'd handle a carton of eggs. No bumps, no bruises. Paula spent a year tucked in her room, tutors coming and going, her first communion received in her bed. So I just thought, oh, this will keep, keep her busy. And that was where the popcorn chains started. We call it the Paula popcorn. Day after day, Paula used a thimble and needle to string hundreds of pop kernels oh. destined for the family Christmas tree. So it was a very special Christmas. It was also Paula's last. Six weeks into the new year, the disease took her life. 50 years. But every Christmas after, the first decorations out of the box have been those popcorn oh, chains. This is my time with Paula. How those fragile kernels have not disintegrated after five decades is a family mystery. Maybe it's the company they keep. Now we start with the angels. When she died, um, you'd explain to your children, your young children, you know, uh, Paula went to heaven. She's an angel now. From that point on, no one has ever had to ask. See what you started, Paula? <laughs> what should I get Terry Hack for Christmas? It's a part of dealing with my grief. This will go up on top of the cabinet there, and maybe I'll put a few up there. And after angels had filled every space on the tree, on her 80th birthday, Terry decorated herself. I have an angel on my shoulder. More angels. <laughs> <laughs> Laughter bubbles up more easily now, but a mother does not forget. You never get over it, but you just get used to it. In Terry's tree this 50th year, all is calm, all is bright. One more. Mother and child, tender and mild, Terry has found heavenly peace. I like it. Now it's Christmas. Traditions. It's one of the things we love most about this time of year. But every so often, something or someone new comes along. <laughs> when we return, the red-headed Christmas stranger and a small town's unlikely gift from an even more unlikely source. I said, my Last God, look at this, look at this. Welcome back to Mears Park in our land of 10,000 stories holiday special. This is an anniversary year for us, our 15th since Land of 10,000 Stories was launched. Most of our stories start with tips from viewers, including this next one about a Christmas visitor dressed in red who was not Santa Claus. No calling birds, no turtle doves to summon Christmas to the tree farm. No geese a laying, no swans a swimming, but then who needs them? He's got a character, he's got a personality. <laughs> he's the new arrival leaving his mark all over this place. He just showed up one day, out of the blue. Angela Nelson's family. Merry Christmas. Runs the Orchard and Tree Farm, where six weeks ago, this rambling Rhode Island red rooster <laughs> took up residence. Yep, his name is Willie. Willie Nelson. It seems to work. We just go with it. Their very own red-headed stranger. He just kind of adopted us and we adopted him. Where Willie came from exactly is a Christmas mystery. The Nelsons checked with the farms up and down their roads and learned of not a single rooster on the land. But however he got here, Willie found the perfect place. See, he's greeting the kids. I'm here, come see me. Turns out more than one guy with a red cap and a beard. Here, Willie. Is spending the holidays charming children. Follow the rooster and he'll show you the best Christmas trees. <laughs> Come here, Willie. <laughs> Looks like he wanted a home and some people to be around. <laughs> In other words, a chicken with his thighs on the prize. The rooster's following us. <laughs> the Nelsons have a barn but Willie has taken to sleeping in the wrapping paper on top of that sleigh. It's Willie the Christmas chicken. Yeah, that's perfect. Sure, no one knows where he came from. 
But Willie Nelson may just be Christmas's best poultry delivery <laughs> since a partridge landed in a pear tree. Keeping everybody smiling. <laughs> oh, Willie. Merry Christmas <laughs> to you. Willie Nelson certainly brightened that little tree lot. Our next story takes us to a little town along the Iowa border where a Minnesotan with a reputation for being frugal turned out to be anything but. There are people in big cities who would consider this harsh, unwelcoming country. People who wouldn't give a nickel to live in Leroy, Minnesota, who wouldn't pay the quarter they charge for coffee at the Leroy Senior Citizen Center. And if they take a cookie, then it's another quarter. People who need to pull up a chair and listen. My God, we've never had this kind of money. As Eileen Evans tells a story of small town values and a check. We didn't know what to do, you know, it was my God, 20,000. The envelope arrived from the estate of 94-year-old Lauren Kruger a retired farmer who had seen his share of sadness, having lost his first wife, then his second, having lost his only child, a teenage son, to cancer. But long before he passed away last year, Lauren gained a reputation. Very frugal. Watched his pennies. Very <laughs> frugal. Very, he was very careful with his money. Apparently so. For as he humbly lived out his days in this white frame house on Main Street, Lauren quietly amassed. We held on to it for a while. A fortune. I said, well, let me see it. I've never seen a check like that before. <laughs> that first $20,000 check was followed by two more, $100,000 each. I said, my God, look at this, look at this. Up to then, the seniors had been getting by on what the county gave their center, $600 a year. <laughs> All together, did we? Uh, well, we got, we got uh, 220,000 total. And Lauren wasn't done. He loved this church. Lauren willed roughly a million dollars to St. Patrick's Catholic Church. He came here for many, many, many years. Then he revealed a non-denominational streak. Well, I think we're very blessed. When Lauren left the Presbyterians, more than $400,000 too. Well, we're looking at the new steel roof that we put on our church, all this thanks to Lauren. Checks for the same amount were delivered to Bethany Bible Church and to the Lutherans. The leak is fixed. Who've already used some of Lauren's gift to repair their bell tower. We were notified uh, through uh, through his attorney. That old pumper truck behind Chief Rick Dolman? It's an 80. Plans are to replace it with a new one. Thanks to the $220,000, Lauren left the fire department. This is our crew quarters. Another $220,000 allowed the ambulance service to build an apartment. So we have to get another bed in here yet. Or it's on-call EMTs. I mean, honestly, Nobody God. knew we had Nobody, money. you know. All told, Lauren spread some $3 million. <laughs> around a town of 925 people. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. But to suggest the giving ended in a $3 million flurry is to show you have a little more to learn about Leroy. The churches were all aware the town's assisted living center needed a new kitchen. The stove will go here. So together, they're sharing some of the money Lauren gave them to build one. It's just the type of community we live in. The seniors wrote a check for the new school playground and were joined by the Lutherans in paying for improvements at the community pool. Makes you feel good? Good. Mm -hmm. The way the seniors felt when they wrote a $10,000 check to Grace Christian Church. We thank you for your generous gift. Which had the misfortune of being the only church in Leroy. We wanted to share. Founded after Lauren had made out his will. Why not give it away? It was given to us. We didn't have it before, so why not help other people that are in need too? Frugal was the word pinned on Lauren Kruger in life. Generous is the way he'll be remembered. It's astounding what he did. There are still people who wouldn't give a nickel to live in Leroy. Christmas. But folks around here prefer to put their faith in the kind of person who'd give everything. Lauren Kruger left a legacy of generosity, and he's not alone. 
when we come back, a man who lived for Christmas and doing good for others. I'm going to start crying. Welcome back to Mears Park, where we are about to reacquaint ourselves with one of the brightest lights we featured in the land of 10,000 stories, a man who lived in St. Paul, not far from here. Michael Gore passed away in 2018, but a few months before he died, we had the privilege of spending a day with Michael, a man who embodied the Christmas spirit. The spirit of Christmas emerges early from apartment 209. Just ask, what kind of day Michael Gore expects? A good day. A good day, always, when Michael is headed to his favorite place. Not in the middle of a Mall of America Christmas, but making his own music at the edge. Thank you, Mama. Have a good day. Salvation Army bell ringing started on November 18th. Michael has not missed a day. No. Nope. Six day weeks, 10 hour days. Not a single day. Some 10,000 bell ringers cover Minnesota and North Dakota. Jolly happy soul. But not one of them puts in more hours than Michael. Very good, my friend, you. Six o'clock in the morning, hey, good morning. Leah Okonwa <laughs> is on the other end. Yes. Of Michael's 6 a.m. wake-ups. He's all ready to go. He never wants to be late. The earlier, the better for Michael. Leah is Michael's personal care assistant, the one who brings him his water because Michael refuses to take his breaks. Give people Christmas is a gift. To give people Christmas, that's what these dollars represent to Michael. Thank you very much. Born with cerebral palsy, legally blind, denied an education past fourth grade. They didn't know how to teach me. They didn't know how to teach him. I just stay home. But Michael isn't staying home anymore. Thank you very the Salvation Army mans its kettles 10 a.m. to 8 p.m., Monday through Saturday. Michael volunteers every single hour. Thank you, Major. It blesses my heart. Major Robert Dolliber tried to pull Michael away just an hour or so to be recognized right. at the Salvation Army employee Christmas party. Yeah, he wouldn't leave. I said, Mike, are you sure? Don't you really want to go? I said, well, we've got a gift for you. You know, we present it to you. And he says, well, thank you, but I can't leave. Notoriety is nice, but helping is better. Notoriety is nice, but helping is better. Michael received his gifts of a scarf and a cap only when Major Dolliber hand delivered them. And he says, you know, this is the best Christmas present you could give me was letting me ring. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Merry Christmas. Many of us have been abundantly blessed in career and family and love. But a 67-year-old who's lost most of his sight and not walked a day in his life is still beyond grateful. Because I'm alive. Alive, the only blessing Michael Gore needs. Yes. I'm gonna start crying. <laughs> Maybe the true meaning of Christmas is at the mall. God bless you. After all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The Salvation Army hosted Michael's memorial service in the spring of 2018. The Salvation Army loyal to Michael, just as he was to them. We have one more stop on this holiday tour of the Land of 10,000 Stories and its glow is the brightest of all. When we return, we'll be heading down I-35 to Faribault and the tree seen round the world. In this dark world, we can use a little light.
Welcome back to Mears Park and our first ever Land of 10,000 Stories holiday special. Amid all these beautiful lights, we are in the perfect place to share another story sent to us by a viewer. It was a tip from a former student at Iowa State University who told us about her drives back to Minnesota for Christmas and the glow she passed that told her she was home. Some rivers meander and peacefully flow. This is not one of those. The river of traffic going right by my window. That sound just overwhelms you. Jerry Loggison built his home 45 years ago on the banks of I-35. And the traffic just kept getting worse and worse over the years. <laughs> Jerry could have cursed the river flowing through the darkness. Instead, he lit the way. Forty-five thousand lights, greeting by Jerry's calculation, more than a million holiday travelers on the freeway passing by Faribault. It's a red oak. It was fairly small when I bought the property, but I thought that that tree's going to amount to something someday. Each year in a rented lift. Jerry works overnights, adding lights, and in return, the river speaks to him. I think it is a thank you. Speaks in one way or another. I was driving south and turned that corner and bam, I couldn't believe it. The contents of Jerry's mailbox. Your gift of light. Would make Santa blush. All of them are people I've never met. Not unlike the phone call Jerry received. Totally out of the blue. From Andy Black in Nottingham, England. Andy had seen Jerry's tree online and found himself inspired to light a tree of his own. You can't make it up, it's really unique. Three years later. I think it's them. Jerry also couldn't make up <laughs> this. There's Andy. Andy. How you doing, buddy? <laughs> All the way from England. Oh this, my God. This is crazy. <laughs> it's all about the tree. <laughs> the tree. Andy okay. just had to see. Three, two, one. Oh, <laughs> look. It's That's better it. than what you imagine, isn't it? It is beautiful, it really is. Andy has long admired from afar the way Americans light up their homes for Christmas. But this, he told his wife Lisa. It's amazing, isn't it? They needed to experience in person. Well, I never thought this day would ever happen, really didn't. Jerry's is now a family tree. You see that, Jerry? Having planted the acorn of an idea, now rooted in Andy's plum tree, back in Nottingham. You can see how quiet our street is compared to this. To most people, you probably think it's just a normal tree, but this is a special tree. At one of the noisiest places in Minnesota, <laughs> Jerry Loggison has restored peace on Earth. In this dark world, we can use a little light. Jerry got it right. We can all use a little light. In that spirit, thanks to everyone we've featured these past 15 years in the land of 10,000 stories, for all you've done to brighten Minnesota, Western Wisconsin, and our world. Thank you for joining us, and happy holidays. <laughs>